In today's A-level IB biology video, unfortunately it's going to be quite a boring video because we're just going to be looking at various definitions associated with ecology because I think it's important that you understand what the various words mean in order to go further with your studies. So the first definition we're looking at is the term environment. Now the term environment is the total non-biological components of an ecosystem. So basically everything that's not animal or plant related. So that would be the water, soil and air, for example. Next up, habitat. Obviously you could hazard a guess at what these definitions are, but I'm going to be nice and specific here. The habitat is the place where a specific organism lives. Population. The crucial word here is all. It is all the organisms of a particular species found in an ecosystem. So I'm going to highlight the key words here, which is all and species. Since I've mentioned the word species, it therefore makes sense to mention its definition. Species are groups of organisms that can potentially interbreed to produce fertile offspring. The key word here is fertile offspring. So members of the same species, when they reproduce, these offspring must be fertile. And I'm just going to show you a quick example as to why this is so important. So in this first picture, we have an ordinary horse. And in the second picture, we have a donkey. Now, the reason why horses and donkeys are separate species is yes, they can interbreed. So at that point, we're hitting this part of the definition. However, unfortunately for them, when they interbreed, they produce what's known as a mule, which we can see in the third picture. Now, mules are sterile. They are infertile. They cannot successfully breed. And for that reason, horses and donkeys are separate species. So make sure you're aware of why that definition is so important. Next word we're looking at is community. This is the population of all species found in a particular ecosystem. Biotic factors are biological living factors. So these are things which affect living organisms. So if we take a rabbit, for example, what will affect its life? Well, first of all, if it's predated upon, so eaten by a fox. Secondly, if parasites like ticks end up on its body, which suck their blood, the amount of grass available will surely affect the rabbit because that makes up a large proportion of its diet. If we take birds, the number of nesting sites for frigate birds will be a huge factor. And then linked with parasites, we have disease. So pathogens will certainly affect our rabbit, our birds, or whatever living organism we're talking about. So biotic factors are living factors. They are caused by other organisms. Abiotic factors now... The exact opposite, so non-biological, non-living factors. So what sorts of things could affect our animals? Well, it could be temperature. For example, bears hibernate in the winter when it gets cold. For plants, it could potentially be the pH of their soil. Plants struggle to grow in very acidic conditions. From a bird point of view, it could be the number of daylight hours. So I'm hoping you're seeing that there's a real difference between biotic and abiotic factors. 